Hey, future respiratory therapist. So Eduardo sent me a message as a comment on a video. I'm not sure which video it's on. Probably on probably the mo probably the modes of mechanical ventilation if I go back and check. But he sent me a question, and I appreciate the question, Eduardo, so, or, or really more of a comment than a question. But I do want to address it because this is a good conversation to have. So Eduardo's in the process of learning mechanical ventilation modes. So between watching my videos and listening to lectures in class, um, apparently you talked to your professor and asked about the likes and the dislikes of SIMV, and the response was was that SIMV is stupid. Now this is a wicked smart professor, okay? So Eduardo, that's probably the most endearing word you could use to describe a professor. So I can only hope that my students say that about me. They probably don't, but um, this professor is wicked smart. And the statement was, was that SIMV is stupid because you either breathe or you don't breathe. Now, to understand this statement, you have to understand the difference between SIMV and AC. You have to understand that in SIMV, you allow for, for true spontaneous breathing, and in AC, you only allow for the triggering of breaths. So there's no true breathing, there's no true spontaneous breaths in assist control. If the patient wants a breath, they ask for a breath, the ventilator gives the tidal volume set that's set at the set flow or the set eye time, depending on what ventilator you're using, okay? So followed this up the next day in clinic with another RT who's been practicing for 38 years, which I guess makes that therapist wicked smart. And they said the same thing. SIMV is stupid, but it's hard to get people to understand that. Now, th this is cool because this is a good conversation to have. Now, I'm not going to validate that SIMV is stupid. I don't think SIMV is stupid. I think volume control, it, control mode is stupid. This is the old school mode before AC and before SIMV. We mechanically ventilated people in what we called control mode. This was we set the rate, we set the tidal volume, and if the patient wanted more than that, they couldn't even initiate a breath. That's called control mode. So if you set a rate of 12 and a tidal volume of 500, the patient got 12 breaths at 500. If they tried to take a breath, they just tried to take a breath, but they couldn't get one. That's a stupid mode of mechanical ventilation. That's also why that mode is no longer available on ventilators. If you look at the vents you're using, if you want to put somebody in true control mode, you have to take the sensitivity so far, so far negative. You have to decrease the sensitivity so far that the patient can't trigger a breath even if they wanted to. That's called torture. And that's why control mode is a stupid mode. It's not even on vents anymore. Now, SIMV is a mode that is still available on every ventilator currently on the market. If it was stupid and completely worthless, then it wouldn't be on these vents anymore. Now, is it as advantageous as what it was thought to be when it first came out? Absolutely not. Okay, so, so is it the, 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 the holy grail of mechanical ventilation like it was thought to be when it originated? Of course not. We've learned, okay, we've learned that SIMV is not the holy grail. We went from AC, we went from control mode to AC, then we went to SI, then we went to IMV, and then we went to SIMV. And the whole purpose of SIMV was to work on this idea of synchronization with the ventilator so that the, we were supposed to reduce the rate of breath stacking. And it does that because it synchronized patients' efforts with mechanical breaths when they happen almost at the same time. Now, the idea that patients either breathe or don't breathe, I have a tendency to agree with. There's two reasons patients don't breathe. They're either brain dead or they're heavily sedated. Those patients are not going to spontaneously support ventilation. 
which is actually an argument for SIMV. If you have a patient who is coming out of sedation and they take an occasional spontaneous breath, that breath shouldn't have to be an assist control breath. It shouldn't have to be a set tidal volume. So, so to say it's stupid is something that I don't endorse. I think it has its place in mechanical ventilation. I think it has its place in mechanical ventilation, especially when you're trying to fix asynchrony. If you have a patient on AC, assist control, and they're consistently breath stacking, meaning the vent gives a breath and then immediately gives another breath, and you give a your, your set tidal volume is 450, but because you're stacking two breaths on top of one another, you're really delivering tidal volumes of 900, that doesn't seem safe, does it? Now, if that patient switched over into SIMV, reduces the amount of breath stacking, and allows for the vent to give its minimal mandatory minute ventilation, meaning you have a set rate and a set tidal volume and the patient can do whatever they want to above that. But if they don't, then it'll at least give that. If that improves synchrony for the patient, then I'm for it. Most of my patients that come up, I put in AC. It tends to be the mode that is true when you have a patient who is not spontaneously breathing, not triggering breaths, we have a tendency to default to AC. Because of that thought process, the patient's not, either patient's breathing or they're not breathing. But if the patient's not breathing and you have them on a rate of, let's say, let's just say you have them on a rate of 15 and a tidal volume of 450 and they're not triggering any breaths, then you could put them in SIMV and it would be the same. SIMV and assist control in the non-breathing patient are exactly the same. They're time triggered, they're volume cycled. Only thing that varies and only thing that is different between AC and SIMV is when the patient is asking for a breath. They ask for a breath in AC, they get the set tidal volume at the set flow or the set I time. If it's working for them, then, then synchrony will be visible. You'll say, okay, this is good, this works. In SIMV, the patient asks for a breath. The vent mode allows them to take a spontaneous breath. Now, if that spontaneous breath is inadequate, you can alter it with pressure support. If that creates a more synchronous mechanical ventilation state, then you have to say that there's some area where SIMV, a small portion or maybe a medium-sized portion of patients that SIMV works for. I don't know if there's I don't know if there's a study that's been done that states that spontaneous breaths intermittently along with mechanical breaths leads to an increase in mortality or longer ventilator days or a, uh, uh, an increased time of weaning. I don't know if I buy that, okay? So, so, so I'm not going to say SIV is stupid. I'm just going to say that, that I think it's patient dependent. And that's why it's still on mechanical ventilators to this day. Now, you also talked about the time cycle function, which, make, which for you, you said made sense why SIMV didn't make sense. Now, I don't, I'm not really understanding this because the time cycle for AC and SIMV is exactly the same. It's just how it changes when the patient takes a breath. So I'm not sure I, I understand the disconnect there. Um, I, don't, I don't necessarily have a problem with a patient taking spontaneous breaths in between mechanical ventilator breaths. I don't have a problem with it. Okay, It's just personal opinion. Just like your wicked smart professor's personal opinion that SIMV is stupid. It's just, this, is, this is all opinion-based stuff when it comes to what's better, SIMV or AC. There's no study out there that says that either is better or worse. 
There's just studies out there that support whatever narrative that study's trying to say. Now, the last thing you mentioned was, is you've seen SINV used in weaning. Now, this I 100% disagree with. If the patient is ready to be assessed for extubation, SIMV is not the mode of choice. When it becomes time where the disease process has reversed and the patient is hemodynamically stable and the PF ratio supports weaning and the blood gases support weaning, meaning you're not hypercapnic and not acidotic, then you simply assess that patient's ability to spontaneously breathe, which means you take them from a set rate of 15, whether it's SIMV or assist control, and you take them to CPAP with a minimal amount of pressure support and you assess their readiness for extubation. There is no more of this weaning process that we did 15 years ago where we would take somebody from an SIMV rate of 12 and we would slowly decrease the rate from 12 to 10 to 8 to 6 to 4, and then we would go to CPAP. We would do that every two hours, and it would take all day to get to CPAP. And then by the time the end of the day rolled around, we'd call with the numbers, and they'd say, okay, we'll wait, and we'll try it again in the morning because we don't want to extubate at 5 p.m. at night, which is stupid. If a patient can breathe at 5 p.m. at night, they can breathe at 2 a.m. in the morning. That, that, that's what's stupid. So from a weaning perspective, SIMV provides no advantage, even though some physicians in some places probably still hold on to that old school mentality. Look, your patient is either ready for extubation or they are not. Take them to CPAP, give them a minimal amount of pressure support, and watch them breathe spontaneously for a short amount of time. Assess weaning parameters, whether it's NIF, whether it's... it's um, you know, the vital capacity, whether it's RSBI, whether it's patient's ability to raise their head up off the pillow, whether it's P100, whatever it is, they have a cuff leak and weaning parameters, support it, then extubate the patient. You don't need this long weaning process through SIMV. That's not supported anymore. Okay? So that's my thoughts on that. Uh, I, don't, I don't think SIMV is stupid. I think it has its role. It's still on vents today because it still does have a role. I don't think there's a problem with patients using their diaphragm to spontaneously breathe in intermittently. The problem with AC is, is that if you have a patient who's breath stacking, and I've, I've addressed this question to a physician and said, hey, one of the problems I see with AC is that since we've gone to this super low Tidal volume mode of mechanical ventilation, which is interesting because low, low volume ventilation, 6 to 8 mLs per kilo, we, we think of it as low volume ventilation. It's actually normal volume ventilation because a normal tidal volume in a spontaneously breathing person is 5 to 8 mLs per kilo. Because we went from 10 mLs per kilo down to 6 to 8 and we're leaning more towards 6, we now call it low volume ventilation. When this patient is breath stacking, what do we do? And the physician's response is, is we increase sedation. Well, we know that increased sedation comes with negative side effects also. Increased sedation equals more vent days, equals longer ICU days, equals longer hospital stays. That's just what the research shows. And so... If that patient who is breath stacking can be put in an SIMV and they can improve synchrony, then I don't know if you can say that SIMV is necessarily stupid. I agree with some of the things that were stated, but I can't endorse everything that was stated. I hope this helps you, Eduardo. I hope you don't go out there and become a single-minded respiratory therapist that says only AC and then CPAP for SBT. And that's the way I'm going to mechanically ventilate every patient. Because if you do, you're gonna miss a percentage of patients that that doesn't work for. It's there. And these options are there for you to find the best option for your patient at that time. To improve synchrony. Make the ventilator breathe like the patient. 
Don't expect the patient to breathe like the ventilator. That's the fatal flaw in mechanical ventilation. Eduardo, let me know if this helps. Everybody else, if you have comments, if you want to add to this, if you, if you agree, if you disagree, whatever it is, I welcome all comments always. And if you haven't hit that subscribe button, please do so right now. Best wishes, guys.